Hello YouTube, this is the lead code rotten oranges problem. Let's look at the problem and then I'll present a solution to this problem. So in a given grid, each cell can have one of three values. The value zero representing an empty cell, the value one representing a fresh orange, and the value two representing a rotten orange. Every minute, any fresh orange that is adjacent for directionally to a rotten orange becomes rotten. Return the minimum number of minutes that must lapse until no cell has a fresh orange. If this is impossible, return minus one instead. And so here's the first example. We have one rotten orange here in the top left corner. Within a minute, if there's a fresh orange, either at the bottom, the top, the right or the left, it, it will infect it. In this case, it can only go in two directions, which is right and down. And you can see in this in this uh, next phase, these two, and then the process repeats itself. This one can affect this one that is down here and this one down here, and it, and it does that. Um, this one can't affect anything. Uh, of course, here in the third minute, same thing. Um, this one can infect that one. And then, in, and then, of course, in the last step, this one can affect that one. So it's always up, down, left, or right, basically. And then in this example, we're returning minus one because the orange on the bottom left corner, even though they don't have the diagram, is never rotten. Yes, it's 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 a fresh orange, but the rotten oranges can cannot get there. It's just not possible based on how the oranges are arranged in the grid. And here um, there are no fresh oranges at minute zero, so the answer is just zero. We we already at the solution right at the beginning. So we, we don't need any time. It, it starts out correct, basically. So that's those are three examples we're given. These are the, you know, the conditions, uh, boundary conditions, whatever you want to call those things. We are going to use a certain approach to solving this. And the approach we're going to use is we're going to loop through all the cells in the grid. And we're going to identify the cells that have rotten oranges, and for each cell identified as having rotten orange, we are going to perform some kind of DFS operation where we go up, down, left, and right, uh, but we only go one level deep with our DFS. And inside our DFS method, we're going to change the value of that fresh orange to the value of a rotten orange. So we could potentially change the value from one to two. Uh, then we have to repeat the process. We, we run that DFS process just up to one level. Then we repeat the process for those rotten oranges that were produced from the previous step. And we essentially go up, down, left, and right, looking for fresh oranges to make rotten. And we just repeat this process continuously until one of two things happens. Either there are no fresh oranges left, then we stop because that's essentially the goal. Then at that point, we can just count the number of minutes that has elapsed and, and return that as the answer. The other thing that could happen is that maybe we, we ran the process and there was no change. We couldn't find any fresh oranges to infect. So we can stop it at that point as well. So one of those two things, both of them have to be true for us to continue. Uh, as soon as one of those two things happens, then we stop. So that's essentially the strategy that we're going to use. Let's see. Now, if we found that we could not make any change, could not infect any oranges, but then there's still some fresh oranges left, then we have to return minus one. Otherwise, if, if there are no fresh oranges at that point, then we just return the number of minutes elapsed. So that's essentially the, the approach or the algorithm we're going to follow. So I will go ahead and type out the solution now. So let's see here. So first, we are going to create a global variable. It doesn't matter if you put private or, 
or you don't put private or you put public, it doesn't really matter in this case. It will still work correctly. So now we're going to implement the oranges rotten method. So first we're going to initialize the length of the array. And uh, we're going to initialize a variable called minutes, which will which will count the number of minutes. And then we're going to initialize something called rval, and rval simply means rotten value. And we're going to initialize it to two. We're doing this because the number that corresponds to rotten oranges is two. However, uh, we are going to be producing more rotten values, but we have to keep track of the rotten values that we produced separate from the, the rotten values that are there at the start of the problem. And so in order to distinguish it, what our DFS function is going to do is it's not just going to change the ones that it finds, the ones being the fresh oranges, it's not just going to change them to two, it's going to actually change them to three. And the reason we're going to do this is because if we change it to two, then we, we can't differentiate between the original rotten ones and the, and, the, and the new rotten ones that were created. So, and even when we continue to process it, the new rotten ones, we now see what those ones can infect, we'll also have to increment it from three to four. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll keep going like that step by step, just continuously incrementing as the process continues. That's the only way we'll be able to process the problem correctly and get the, the right solution. So let me just continue. So I'm going to say while here, I'm going to say while changed is equal to true has fresh oranges. We're going to define a method or has fresh orange, okay, called has fresh oranges that takes the grid as a parameter. Then we'll say changed is equal to false. So those two conditions I have above on the while loop are the conditions I mentioned earlier. Those are the two things that will stop our while loop where we know that we've gone to the end of the process and we've gone as far as we need to go. So I will just continue the implementation here. Now we're going to check If we can find a rotten value, so our alval the first time we initialize it to two, so it's checking for the value two. Then we're going to define a method called rot, and that method will take the grid, it's going to take the i value. It's going to take the j value, which are our grid loop variables, and it's going to take the rotten value as an argument. I will implement it shortly and we'll see the code. But for now, what we're doing is, I guess the rot method is essentially our DFS method. And what we're doing is we're going up. In this, in this case, we're going down. That's why we say i minus 1. Going up is i plus 1. So these four methods represents going up and down, left and right, essentially. That's what we're doing in these four methods. And we only do it when, uh, when we find the rotten values. So right after we have looped through, I need to get my loop. Yes, right after we've looped through all the cells, then what we do is we check if the value of changed is true or false. If the value of change is true, then we can increment our minute counter because we know that, you know, it will take one extra minute 
to move to the final answer. And then we'll increment our rval variable as well. And we do this because the next time we, we run this process, we are going to be looking for three, not two. Three would represent the newly written values, which are the ones that are going to go ahead and cause more fresh ranges, either up, down, left, or right, to, to become rotten. So that's the whole point. When we come out of the while loop, we are going to check if we're going to check for the value of the change variable. And we're going to try to see if it did if it did not change, if there was no change, meaning that we could not find any fresh oranges to change, then we're going to return minus one because we know this scenario will happen if you do still have fresh oranges and then return the number of minutes. Next method to implement is going to be the rot method. So let's go ahead and implement that now. So what we're doing here is we are basically saying that um, if we go out of bounds, then we don't want to do anything. Uh, if i is less than zero, we went left out of bounds. Uh, j is less than zero, we went down out of bounds, well, up out of bounds. Or we went, um, you know, to the right out of bounds or to the bottom out of bounds, return, just, just return from the method. And then otherwise, then we're still within bounds, so we can do our check to see if we can find any fresh oranges that we can make rotten. That's essentially what we're trying to do here. And so we say, okay, if we read ij is equal to one, that's a fresh orange right there, then we make it rotten. How do we make it rotten? We change the value of that cell to the rotten value, which will be our val plus one. It's not just going to be two, it's going to be two plus one the first time this is run. And then the next time we run this, the value of our val will be three. That will be the value of the, of the rotten ones. But then the new rotten ones becomes three plus one, which is four. And so that's how the process progresses. And that's how you make sure that you don't confuse, you, you, don't, you don't count those values that were initially rotten that have already performed their job. And then, and then you, know, you just get the problem wrong. So that is the logic behind that. I think there's one more method to implement. Yes, there's one more method. And that is the Haas fresh oranges method. Let's see about implementing that one. Then we say if grid i j Is equal to one. One is one is a fresh orange essentially. So we're just looking to see if we can find a fresh orange. And if we do, then we can just return true. That's it. And then if we come, if we look through the entire grid and we didn't find um, if, a fresh orange, then we return false. So that's it. We have our has fresh orange method. We have our rot method. Everything looks good as far as I can tell. We initialize chain to true, but then right inside the loop, we, we, we set it to false because we that's the only way we'll know for sure if it changed at all. Because that way, right in, inside this method, oh, that I forgot to implement that. I forgot to add that. Yes. So we have to set changed to true in here so yes we change 
Yes, we change a fresh orange to rotten. That's what we do here. But then we also set this change variable to true because we would have initialized it to false when we start the loop or when we when when we when we initialize one it, uh, an iteration of the loop we, we set that to false and then that way we can know for sure that okay did it change at all yes if this is set to true and then and then we're asking here okay if it did change then we can increment the minutes by one and then a, a rotten value the next set of rotten values becomes three then and it goes on and on and on like that so the, uh, the next iteration the next set of rotten values will be four of course the minutes continue to increase on and on and that's pretty much it so let's run the code let's see if we got it right yeah we're testing it Ooh, compile error let's see line 48 uh what did we do here okay we need one more yes we need to do that yes one more bracket was missing okay it's accepted um so let's submit and see what happens excellent so you know the runtime is very good faster than 98 percent and the memory switch seems to be very good also faster than, um, well less than 81 percent so so it works correctly i hope this was helpful to someone and i hope the solution is clear and in case something isn't clear or you have any comments or suggestions kindly write them in the comment section thank you for watching this video and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you